Hello and welcome to this course in sensor fusion and nonlinear filtering for automotive systems. My name is Lars Hammarstrand and I will be your guide through this fascinating subject. As you will see, sensor fusion and nonlinear filtering is a core technology for both advanced driver assistance systems as well as self driving vehicles. Both of these rely on detailed knowledge about the surrounding traffic situation, for example, the position and heading of other vehicles. Typically, this is achieved by filtering and fusing the noisy observations of the traffic situation coming from a multitude of sensors, such as radars, cameras, and lidars, each having their own strengths and weaknesses. And by combining the information from many of these in a filtering framework, we can achieve the required level of accuracy and robustness. Although this course is self-contained, to get a complete picture, we highly recommend that you also take the course multi-object tracking for automotive systems, which is also part of our MicroMaster program in Emerging Automotive Technologies. In our course, we'll focus on the filtering and sensor fusion algorithms that are at the core of any tracking system, but can also be used on their own to solve advanced problems related to, for example, self-localization, which we'll see an example of a bit later on in this lecture. The tracking course will extend on this by considering the problem of assigning sensor observations to the correct object. Together, these courses will give an excellent foundation to tackle advanced problems related to accurately perceiving the surrounding traffic situation using sensor observations. Now, in this course, you will not only learn the fundamental theory which these algorithms are based upon, but you will also get to implement your methods yourself and build your own sensor fusion toolbox. You will get the chance to try your toolbox on illustrative problems to get insight in how they behave, such as after the course can choose and adapt the appropriate method to fit your sensor fusion and nonlinear filtering problems. So let's dive right in. So what do we mean by sensor fusion and nonlinear filtering? Well, one high level definition is that we should use a sequence now, usually we mean a time sequence here of noisy observations from one or more sensors. If we use one sensor, we call it filtering. And if we use more sensors, we call it sensor fusion. As simple as that. Now, the goal is to filter this sequence of noisy sensor observations to get a better estimate of some unknown quantity of interest, which we in this course will refer to as our state. However, we are not just content with an estimate, we're also interested in finding the associated uncertainty measures. That is, how sure we are of our estimate. And we want to do this at the current time instance, and then at the next time instance, and the next, and so on. Now, this is perhaps a bit too high level. So let's try to make it a bit more concrete by considering an example. So, here we have our host vehicle. And here is a leading vehicle that we want to know the position and velocity of. To help us out, we have mounted two sensors on our host vehicle, one camera and one radar. These sensors gives us noisy observations on the position and velocity of this leading vehicle. And our goal is to fuse or filter a sequence of these sensor observations to better understand where this vehicle is and where it's heading as well as to describe how certain we are of this. In addition to these external sensors, we also have sensors measuring the current velocity, acceleration, steering wheel angle, and so on, on our host vehicle, such that we know fairly well how our host vehicle is moving. Now, the camera is capable of detecting and classifying vehicles in its image. Due to the nature of the camera, it's fairly accurate at determining the relative angle to the vehicle as there is a simple mapping between pixel and angle, but much worse at determining the distance to the object, as this cannot be measured directly using a single camera. Now, let's say that the camera detects that there is a vehicle here. The radar, on the other hand, is very good at measuring the distance to an object, as this can be measured directly from the time delay of the returning radar wave. Additionally, the radar can also observe the Doppler shift of the returning wave, which gives the relative radial velocity of the vehicle in this case. That is, the relative speed of the vehicle in the direction towards the radar. However, the radar is not good at measuring the angle to an object. This is mainly due to limitations in the size of the radar antenna, 
and the fact that the vehicle in itself is not a well-defined point target, and we tend to get reflections from many different places on the vehicle. In this particular case, the radar seems to get a detection here with a radial velocity like this. So, the radar is good at measuring distance and relative radial speed of the object, but it's worse at measuring the angle to an object. The camera, on the other hand, is good at determining the relative angle to the object and to classify what type of object it is. It is, however, not as good at measuring the distance to the object. Now, let's assume that we have so-called sensor models for both the radar and the camera that describes these strengths and weaknesses. We can use these together with the methods and algorithms that you will learn in this course to combine or fuse the information from both sensors. With the aid of the sensor models, we will make sure that we use the strength of both sensors to get a better idea of the state of this vehicle. That is, where it is and where it's heading. In our filters, we call this step where we use our new observations to get a better idea of where the vehicle is as the update step. And the result could look something like this. So here we have our estimate of the state of the vehicle. So in this case, we're trying to estimate the position of the rear of the vehicle and its velocity vector. In addition to giving an estimate, we also want to describe our uncertainty, which we illustrate by this ellipse here. You can think of this ellipse as indicating other probable positions of the vehicle, or more technically, as a contour of a probability distribution over the position of this vehicle, given that we have made these observations. Note that we also have a similar description of our uncertainty of the velocity vector, but this is not illustrated here. Now, with this description, we summarize everything that we know about this vehicle from our observations at the current time. All right, but here we talk about a sequence of noisy observations. And up until now, we only considered a single time instance. So what happens if we move to the next time instance where we get new information from our sensors? Well, it could look something like this. Now, both our leading vehicle and our host vehicle has moved since last time, and our previous knowledge about where this leading vehicle was has now been a bit outdated. So should we simply throw it away and start all over? Well, this information here tells us something about where the vehicle was and where it was heading a short time ago. Surely we should make use of this information and try to improve our knowledge about the state of the vehicle over time. Also, we tend to make not too dramatic changes when we drive, so the movement of the vehicle will be highly correlated over time, and we should try to make use of this. So what we can do is simply take what we know from the previous time instance and extrapolate on that, or make a prediction into the current time. If we assume that the vehicle is continuing to move with the same velocity as it had in the previous time instance, this would mean that the vehicle should be somewhere here at the current time. Now, as we are making assumptions about the motion of the vehicle and predicting into the future, it would be reasonable that we should increase our uncertainty a bit to account for this added uncertainty. For example, if the driver pushes the accelerator or brake pedal or turns the steering wheel, the velocity vector will change and deviate a bit from our assumed velocity vector. In our filters, we call this our prediction step and we call the model that we use to calculate our prediction as our motion model. So now we have aligned our old information such that it expresses what we know about the vehicle at the current time where we now get new observations from our radar and camera. What we want to do now is fuse our information about where we think the vehicle is using our previous information and update that with the information from our current observations. So we do another update step where we update our prediction with this new information and get a new updated description of the current position and velocity of the target vehicle again, including uncertainty measures. Note that as we're adding new information about the position and velocity of the vehicle from our current observations, our uncertainty will shrink again, which is natural, right? So if we move to the next time instance, our vehicles has moved. So we predict our previous information to the current time where we get new information from our sensors which we then use to update our knowledge about the current state of the vehicle. 
So in this example here, we have considered a sequence of three noisy sensor observations, both from a radar and a camera, which we have fused in order to get a better understanding of where this vehicle is, as well as its velocity vector in each time instance. We describe our result by expressing an estimated state, so in a sense, our best guess of the position of the vehicle and its velocity, and our uncertainty related to this. More technically, we describe our results using a probability distribution of the state of the vehicle, given that we have made these observations. This probability distribution should then summarize everything that we know about the vehicle at the current time instance. Now, we should note that we will not consider the data association problem or handle multiple objects in this course. That is, we could have an additional vehicle here from which we also receive observations. As the sensor will typically not tell us from which object a specific measurement came from, we instead need to figure this out ourselves. Now, this is an interesting problem in of itself and something that we have devoted large parts of our sister course, multi-object tracking for automotive systems too. So if you are intrigued by these types of problems, we would highly recommend that you also study that course, which can be seen as a continuation course on what you will learn here. Now, having said that, there is still many interesting problems that can be solved by only using methods that you will learn in this course, and we will look at some examples in a bit. And although we mainly give examples related to automotive applications, what you will learn in this course can be applied in many other applications. For example, in communication systems, medical signal processing, technical analysis and economics and finance, and many, many, many more. So now we have looked at this illustrative example, which we hope gave you some insights into what we mean when we talk about sensor fusion and nonlinear filtering.